Hi, I am going to show you how to move objects following a path in Unity. We use for this the asset named Curvy Splines, which adds to Unity features such as uh, mesh deformation, mesh generation, object scattering, and more. So we start by creating a spline. Uh, there is a tutorial explaining how to do that. You can find the link in the description or in the upper right corner. Uh, so next we select the object where the object we want to move we add to it a spline controller component and then we assign a spline to it as you can see we can move the object by modifying the position parameter we can also modify the speed but it will not uh, show any effect until we hit the preview button or we can simply just enter play mode I am now going to show you all the parameters in the inspector and explain them but you can also click on this help button and it will send you to the website uh, the user manual where you can see more details about the parameters and also some links to uh, tutorials as you can see note that hovering the mouse over the parameters in the inspector shows more details Next, I will explain the position mode and move mode parameters. They are both very similar. One is related to the position parameter and the other one to speed. Their value can be either absolute or relative. When it is set to absolute, for example, for position mode, position will have uh, values, possible values between zero and the length of the spline. But in relative, it can have a value between zero and one. The relative parameter is the one used in the mathematical equations of splines, in case you are familiar with them, otherwise you don't need to understand them. But if you are curious about it, I made a tutorial that explains this a little more, link in the description or upper right corner. Next is the direction parameter, either forward or backward. Notice that the ship uh, rotates when we change the direction, we will speak about this a little bit later. Uh, then we have the clamping parameter, which defines what what the ship does once it reaches the end of a spline. For now, it is set to loop, so it goes to the other end of the spline. Uh, it works best with the closed spline, so I showed it here, so it doesn't teleport. Otherwise, if you are using an open spline, uh, maybe you would like you would prefer to use clamp or ping pong ping pong make the object go back when it reaches the end of uh, the spline and clamp will just make the object stop next is the constraint setting which allows you to freeze the rotation or translation along one or multiple axes in this example rotations around the y-axis play automatically makes the controller start moving once you enter play mode otherwise you will have to make it move by calling an api method next is connections handling so to showcase it i will first create a connection uh, creating them and everything about them is explained in another tutorial link in the description and upper right corner so now we have two splines that are connected and via this parameter we will define how the ship should behave once it reaches the connection i set it here to random spline but since i set reject current spline to true meaning that it will randomly choose a spline except the one i'm on so it will always change to the other spline as you can see i can set a custom value where i can define my own logic and the details about how to do that is explained in the documentation. Always the interrogation point leads you to the correct uh, section in the user manual. Next are the orientation related parameters. So the orientation of the spline is the upper direction of the spline. You can see them here as the yellow lines that you can show or hide through this view menu. Now I am going to apply a swirl to modify the orientation of the spline. Uh, more about the orientation parameters in one of the tutorials, link in the description and upper right corner. Next, we are going to modify the parameters of the controller to 
tell it how the controlled object, the ship, uh, how it should be rotated depending on the orientation of the spline. We define the orientation of the object by aligning two vectors. The first one from the spline defined by source. The second one from the object defined by uh, target. So in this case, the orientation of the spline with the forward direction of the target. The next two settings apply smoothing on the changes of the ship's orientation. Here the direction of the ship changes gradually as you can see. Notice there is a delay. The stronger the smoothing, the longer the delay is. The first of the settings is related to the forward of the ship and the second one to its upper vector. Next setting is ignore direction. This controls how the ship rotates when it goes forwards or backwards. So either it rotates to match the direction of movement or it keeps uh, its orientation. Next are the offset settings, which define a lateral translation of the object. The offset radius defines the distance of the translation, while offset angle defines its direction. Next, I will explain the compensate offset setting. So now we have two ships, uh, one on the spline and one offsetted. The offsetted one is in the inner side, so it has less distance to travel. So the compensate offset setting allows you to define whether the offsetted ship should advance at the same rate than the ship on the spline, or it should keep a constant speed. Next are the events. So these are regular Unity events. You have one event for when the controller is initialized, one for when a position is reached, one for when a control point is reached, another one for when uh, one of both ends of a spline is reached, and finally one for when switching the controller between two splines. So the uh, on position reached uh, events are explained in a separate tutorial. A link in the description and in the upper right corner. But basically you define the specific position and then you associate it with uh, one or multiple events. Finally, the advanced settings, which contains only one setting that makes the controller update uh, as frequently in edit mode as in play mode. This is virtually unnecessary, but this setting can be useful in some fringe cases. Next, we are going to talk about the other available controllers. Uh, first, we have the UI text spline controller that is used to move text elements, and it is very similar to spline controller. The next controller is the volume controller that we are going to use here to move the yellow car on the mesh road generated using Kirby splines. So this controller has, in addition to the regular position setting, a cross lateral position that is used to move the object laterally. Finally, the path controller, which is used here to move the capsule along a path generated by projecting a spline on the terrain beneath it. I hope this tutorial was helpful and have a great day.